record before I actually keep going. We have started. All right. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our February 10th Airport Advisory Board board meeting. Very nice to see you all. Uh, Michelle, glad to have you back with us. Can we ask you to start with calling the roll, please? You bet. Uh, Chairman Earl? Here. Vice Chair Jordan? Here. Board Member Bliss? Here. Board Member Dean? Here. Board Member Robeson? Here. Board Member Salam so, Salamitation, sorry, Talis. <laughs> yeah, just say Talis, that's cool. <laughs> the, the nice all day, I was like, I'm going to say it right. Do, Don't worry so. about it. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm here. Thank you. You have a quorum. Thank you, Michelle. Um, first on our agenda is our public invited to be heard. I don't believe we have anyone on the meeting right now. I'll just make sure. And seeing no one there, we'll move right along then to approving our minutes. We have minutes from both December 9th and our January 13th meetings. Does anyone have any revisions to the minutes before we uh, approve, make a motion? Mr. Robeson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it was from the last meeting, so uh, January meeting. Let's see, page four, lines 36 through 38. Uh, it has to do with the land for any extension of the runway to the west. Now, I could be remembering wrong, but what I understood was um, not that there's not enough land there, but the city hasn't made any overtures to the current owners to let them know that we're interested or, you know, made any progress in that direction. Is that what you guys recall? Yes. I think what I had said, Russell, it was that on the existing airport land, there's not enough for an extension. It would be required acquisition. So okay. that's consistent with what you just said. Okay. Well, I would um, request a clarification there because, you know, it's a minor point really, but I think that's fundamental to one of the things that the airport is trying to do, which is extend the runway. So, so we could suggest then the amendment would be there's not enough uh, on line 37, not enough land within the current airport boundaries without an acquisition. Yeah. Okay. But, but can I, can I add something to that? Does yes. that mean we can't do a thousand foot extension? Well, so Steve, I'm going to ask to just hold that and for a second and just okay. on the minute approval. Sorry. I think it's okay. a good question, but I'm still going to stop it. Um, were there any other amendments? I got one more. I got yeah. one more for you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, page, page six, lines 27, 28. Um, again, my understanding was that we don't really need to change the gate code, but the minutes read as if that's kind of something we're uh, trying to do. That's, Jeff, do you want to clarify? Yeah, I mean, that's something that I do intend to do once I've gotten a complete um, communication list so that I can communicate with everyone. You are going to change the gate code at that point? At that point, yes. Okay. I misunderstood then, so thank you. Does anyone else have any revisions to either set of minutes? Okay, I have one for the January 13th minutes on page five, line 29. It just has my first name instead of the last name for the vote. So I would then entertain a motion without any other discussion to approve the minutes with the, uh, with the two amendments. I move that we uh, approve the minutes as amended. Can you guys do them one at a time? One, one set at a time, that way then we can make sure everybody agrees. Absolutely. So, Russell, do you want to, do you, do you want to maybe propose just the December 9th minutes? Yeah, I move that we approve the December 9th minutes. Is there a second? I'll second that. Move and second and any further discussion? All those in favor of approving the December 9th minutes, raise your hand, please. No one opposed. Thank you all. And then can Russell or whoever would like to a, a second motion for the January 13th minutes. I move that we approve the January 13th minutes as amended. And I'll second that as well. Okay. All right, thank you both again. Any other discussion? All those in favor, if you wanna raise your hand. 
and none opposed. Thank you guys. Minutes approved with amendments. Um, can we move on then to our old business financial update? Jeff, I don't know if uh, if you have something for us tonight on this. I don't. With uh, Joni out this week, I've been, um, I've been unable to, I don't have personal access into our financial system, so I have to work through her for that. So I do not have an update. We will uh, look for an update the next month. And then we have our standing item of our airport needs recommendations to council. Um, yeah. I don't have anything in particular here. I think there's kind of two things we could discuss if we want to. One would be some of the topics Melinda proposed last month for potential things for people to be interested in. And Steve, I think it would be a great opportunity for you to ask your thousand foot runway extension question as well, um, since we're here. So either okay. way, first, or Steve, go ahead. Uh, I'll, go, I'll go first. Um, I, I was just thinking about it. I mean. If we can't do a thousand feet, is there any restriction on uh, shortening the extension, say 500 feet? Any, any extension of that runway is going to be a plus, especially on those hot days in summer. And I don't disagree with that statement. And I, and I will verify the answer, but my understanding is, is that with the current FAA requirements of ensuring that all safety areas remain on airport property, that that does not allow an extension of the current runway of any lick. Uh, but I'll be happy to, to verify with our planning engineering team uh, on that specific question. But, but Jeff, just to be clear, the runway extension could still happen if the city acquires the land to support it. Yes, I, I, yes, I took Steve's question as, as the land sits today. Yeah. Is there any room for uh, running yeah. extension? That, that's there's exactly. Always, there's always room for extension when you acquire more land. Yeah, that was my my question. Yeah, with the question. with the existing land that we control, can we shorten the runway length uh, extension and still have enough room? Well, we take it out to what wherever the the uh, safety uh, area has to be, and then calculate how how much the runway can be extension right and, and i'll check and verify that i believe that the safety areas of the existing runway do not sit within airport property as it stands oh really yep that's true i just looked at that again it, um it's supposed to be a thousand feet and we only have about 800 feet to the fence so we're 200 feet into property that we don't control right and and that historically was very normal for airports. Um, it was not a previous requirement of FAA to have those safety areas. Mm -hmm. But what happened over time is that when you don't control that land, then people will do what they want, whether it's with trees or otherwise. And so it became more of a issue to spend money on managing things off airport than an airport having full control of that land. So that's sort of what drove the change in FAA policy. Hmm. I did not know that. Thank you. Uh -huh. Mr. Salmantino. Hi, and you know, I'm not proposing this. I'm just purely educational for my purposes. Uh, would this be something that if the landowner didn't want to sell it, could we imminent domain it? I am not an eminent domain expert, but my understanding is, is that uh, airport sponsors, typically cities or counties, uh, do have the ability for the public benefit to eminent domain land. Whether or not this specific one falls within the criteria, I can't answer that, but I do know that that has been used in the past. I think that, thanks uh, Steve for bringing that up. I think it was just is a good clarification coming out of those minutes. Um, Vice Chair Jordan, do you you had suggested last month a series of items, probably ten or eleven or twelve, um, that we may want to focus on and have one or two of us each assigned to some of those. Um, I don't know if anyone had a chance to think through those. If you want to kind of maybe walk through those one more time, because I, I thought it was a really good list. Okay. Just see how we might want to 
how we might want to focus on those going forward as it fits into you know our core role of recommendations to council going forward yeah the thank you the um to the extension discussion i know that if this has been an agenda item since i joined the board in january of 2016 and it was scheduled it was on the books it felt like it was really far away uh, then it got moved up a couple of years and then it kind of got pushed off. Um, and I couldn't, I couldn't swear to anything in court at this point, but at one point that soccer field on the West side, um, with the farm was, uh, they, you know, had been spoken to and they were open to, uh, selling that land to the airport for the purpose of extension we were still it was so far out financially with the faa and grants and things like that and the, so the purchase of the land and then the um all the studies and things that had to happen those had to happen first as i recall uh, prairie dogs and preble mice and things like that and then uh then you know we had to begin the process really close with um what was the viability, which then would lead to, could we make an offer on it, which would lead to, do we have the money and, and then will the FAA back us on the extension? So it is, it seems like they just happen at other airports. <laughs> then we go fly and discover new paint jobs and new asphalt. And, um, but it is quite a process since we don't own that land. But at one point there were talks and the land owner was open to selling, but that was probably, three or four years ago, I would guess, at least. And um, so I don't know if that condition still exists or if that land sold. And then um, I don't know how many of you saw that there's a, um, uh, is it mulching uh, facility that they're going to put in? You know, the county is next to us to the north. And if you ever go get trees, you go way back to the back and they're going to put in a chipping facility back there. And there's been some discussion with the people who live on St. Brain Road um, about the noise. And that's a city development that's going to happen. It'll be over again to the north and west end of, oh, I feel like I'm going to sneeze, of the, of the airport for us. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, and the, um, but again, that soccer field is really the issue. And I've always um, uh, watched that soccer field closely, especially in the summer. It makes me very nervous to come in over that with all the little kids there. So some of the, so the runway extension would be, um, we could all become um, experts in our area if that's an area that you wanted to take on um, as an area of interest would be to kind of monitor that ask questions, find out. So the runway extension would be one. Um, the um, grants are always a question, just how we can liaise on those. Those are pretty much in the ballpark of the city, uh, but just you know, following through and helping out uh, with the airport manager with getting data or whatever else has to be done. Those are the kind of things I used to ask David if there was any way I could help him as a just a civilian and somebody on the airport, could I help him administratively with anything like that? Um, rules and regs compliance, um, kind of the FBO kind of eyes on the airport. We have the squawk list through LOPA um, that they were uh, like six months ago, or there was a lot of chatter with it. And they were keeping the spreadsheet of um, issues around the airport that I think most of them have been addressed now, but we could bring that in at the board um, to watch a squawk list and, and be sure that we're um, aiding and enabling the improvements around the airport because some of them, you know, the pilots do. I did see the Vazi on the other night. Um, so that was awesome. And um, so the squawk list, the um, public restrooms on the south side for those based on the south side that have a vested interest. The airport development in general, we've had um, different members come and speak to us about their ideas for development and kind of be that liaison, uh, that person that keeps their ear to the ground on that. Um, and then airport, airport development with LDEP, um, you know, promoting us with the city, being that liaison to be sure that we're showing up in the important areas of the city that we feel we get left out of um, 
and stepped over by uh, DIA typically. A lot of things refer to DIA as being the closest airport when we have one right there. The airport expo and air show, which has been in my, my basket for quite a long time. And I'll just go ahead and say while I'm saying that, that we had decided on a 2023 show um, prior to um, uh, Mr. Slater's passing. And so I don't know that we'll try to pursue 2023 with a new airport manager coming on. That was the, I thought we'd be well underway at this point working on it. And we've had setbacks of all kinds. So that's something to consider, but that does require uh, a very knowledgeable team to pull that off. And then finally, I think, oh, uh, the electric charging stations, which plays into the Advanced Longmont 2.0 and the climate action. Um, so attending those meetings, listening in on what's the discussion, brainstorming how the airport can uh, be a part of that and be at the, we'd love to be at the lead, uh, not 20 years behind all that. We'd like to be up at the front and perhaps even um, breaking ground uh, in aviation and in the city uh, for working with the city and not being a, um, an outlier or a stodgy old component. Uh, but actually being on the front of it. So charging stations, it's easy to say, not easy to implement. Uh, we discussed that airport last month, that um, aircraft, uh, that's still, there's still a lot of questions about what they're going to need, um, you know, how, what's a quick charge look like, things like that. So again, just becoming um, subject matter experts in a, in a specific area that you're interested in and um, could report back to the board or be available to be called either providing reporting proactively after attending a meeting or, or learning something new and then uh, being able to be called on to gather information um, as it comes before us so we can present to council. Linda, thank you. And, and I'll just you know add the, all of that is within the context of providing recommendations to council on future action and our duty of kind of just promoting awareness, utilization and development of the airport. I have two hands raised, so I'm gonna go council member Martin first since you were up there first. Yeah, um, thank you. I just had a couple of, of corrections on, on uh, Melinda's first item. Uh, the wood chipping facility is not a city facility. We probably wouldn't have done that. It's county, it's, isn't it? A county. It's a county okay. facility. I'm looking into it because I've heard from constituents who are unhappy. Um, and uh, the, other, the other important point is that it's got a three-year renewal cycle. Yes. So uh, the, if, if it does go in, it goes in for three years and not forever. Which, so, um, you know, in terms of the availability of the site and, and yeah. the And it's definitely parallel to the runways. It's not going to, like, come around over onto yeah. that property at the end of the runways is definitely parallel. And then it's chippers, I don't know, I doubt it's gonna be a height, any kind of an issue for us, but I did see that the conversation was about the noise from it and the trucks coming in and out that the neighbors yeah. on St. Brand are worried about it. And they, right. you know, I think only one person said, you know, we've already got enough to deal with with the airport, but that is the quiet area right there. We've cut our engine when we're coming into land, so it's quieter. But just to say that that is happening beside us and to the north and west yes. and that um last i it's been a little bit since i've flown but i still th i think we've still got a soccer field i think that's still an active soccer field at the end of um one one departing to the west so and that's obviously the land that we'd be considering the thousand foot to my memory as well uh would take us past 75th uh it would actually we, we can't actually do a thousand feet even from the end of our runway out because we just hit the road. So we do have to look at something a little under that anyway. And that's all, uh, all just in my memory from when this has been brought up in the past. Um, and then to Marsha, to the, um, um, the initiatives with the city, you know, that's definitely, we, we definitely want to be involved. And then with um, promotion by the city. Um, to new businesses and, and businesses looking to relocate families, whoever it is. Yeah, um, I was kind of tied in with the Arts Longmont um, initiative for a performing arts center. We, we kind of showed up on the radar there. It did require a longer runway. So there's a lot of history in those discussions, but we're still at the end of the day, 
sitting here <laughs> talking about length and not having the land. So it's frustrating for us to never feel like we can get just a square one um, and either, you know, push it along enough to if it gets shot down completely, so be it, at least we'd understand. But that's a function of the airport and the FAA and a lot of other, a lot of other bodies, so. Um, Talos, do you wanna go ahead? Yeah, super quick, just to add on to uh, what Ms. Jordan was talking about. Uh, about opportunities. Um, I'm on the Innovate Longwa board. So what we're going to be working on is advanced manufacturing. Um, and anyone who has an idea or wants to participate or uh, would like to talk to me about ideas uh, that we can incorporate this, uh, it's, I, think it's, I believe it's called LASP, which is a, or a big giant facility that they're trying to raise money for. Um, so plenty of opportunity. Please reach out if you want to chat. I'm happy to talk to you about it and learn from your perspectives. Great. Thank you. Russell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, just wanted to quickly say I just measured um, when Melinda was talking about the distance to 75th, and it's 2,200 feet ish. So we do have room for 1,000 okay. plus okay. 1,000 um, of safety area. Barely. Okay. I'm glad I wasn't the only one on Google Maps looking at. Uh, uh, so maybe it was if we were was looking too. at longer. Yeah, maybe we were thinking 10,000. I don't know. There was definitely a discussion of do we go, you know, can we can we put the road underneath us to go over, do it Chicago style or whatever airports those are where they go under. Um, and it's been a long time. Yeah, there's been so much discussion and so little movement. And so. Well, so to, to keep us moving on this for tonight, I mean, I wrote down I think six of those that at least in my mind are kind of the more important ones, though mm -hmm. certainly it's not up to me if anyone disagrees with me. But, but I'm curious if there's kind of you know, two people for each of these who wants to you know, be involved and kind of take this on. So when we in, incorporate board reports, we're able to bring back updates and kind of have that person be the subject matter expert to inform the rest of us. So the ones I wrote down, and Melinda, I'm adding one to your list for, I think, something that needs to happen in the next month. I've got the air show in the expo. Mm -hmm. I've got electric charging. Okay. I've got the runway extension. I've got kind of, I guess, broad promotion, partnership, long run development. Um, tell us I'm taking your innovation. And then we need to talk about an annual report. Oh my gosh. Yes, you are right. And did I miss one that someone thinks we should be focused on kind of as well right off the bat here? Thanks for catching the annual report. I usually try to help on that uh, to get stories from the airport and yeah. uh, get some of the community input. Mr. Bliss. You're muted. Yeah, You're still muted. You got to mute yourself, Steve. Sorry, I got muted. I didn't even know it. <laughs> uh, the FBO, is that something we should be looking into? In what context? And just having an FBO at the airport. I mean, so my... why we don't have one and how we get one and do we have to advertise? Do we have to go to people? That's one. And number two is, is uh, the bathrooms on the south side. Is that one of the things that Melinda brought up? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'll take on that project. How's that? All right, Steve, I'm writing it down for restrooms. Anyone else want to be on the restroom? Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm only doing that because I spend most of my time down on the south side. And it's crazy that if I have to use a, a bathroom, I have to leave the airport or go around to the uh, north side. The, the potty, the, the porta potty, sometimes there's multiple people <laughs> going there. I can't even imagine. <laughs> I have stopped in Cheyenne though to go to the bathroom before I came home. So that's maybe you want to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a good idea. I always forget that part. That's right. You know, <laughs> find your favorite bathroom someplace else. <laughs> All right. I'm going to run down this list then. 
and see if any of these, you know, anyone really wants to volunteer for some of these. So expo and air show, huge topic. Yeah, it's, I'll be off the board by the time we're doing that, but I think that's fine. We had other, you know, we've got a lot of people on that, so. Even when you're off the board, we still need you. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Does, does another board member want to kind of be involved in that with Melinda? Um, since we can only have two board members, Malcolm, thank you, absolutely. Electric mm -hmm. charging. Anyone have a particular interest there? And I and broadly infrastructure, all the rest of that, just really trying to understand how how that plays in here. Talis, anyone else? Well, I'm curious about that one as well, especially for the financial implications. So I will put me there, seeing no one else. Runway extension. Russell. If no one else, I mean, I'll help too. Russell and Talis. Um, broad promotion, partnership, Longmont development. Don't everyone at once here. Yeah, really. Um, Talis has in, inroads, it sounds like. I'm yeah, now, I'm already I, kind of doing that. Okay. Talis. And I'll join you on that one, Talis, for um, if you. Yeah, that'd be you great. Need. Thank you. Yeah. Can I lump, Steve, you had brought up FBO. Can I lump that in with just development broadly? Yes. For kind of services and who, anyone have a particular interest in development, FBO services? I'll put you, myself on there if anyone wants to join me. Are you uh, putting that in? I wrote down from when Melinda was talking that Squawk List was one of them. Is that kind of what you're getting at there? I am not actually. I was thinking more yeah. broader. You know, what we were talking about, God, when was that? July or August with how we, you know, what's that future hangar development look like? What's kind of the next steps of development on the airport? That was okay. more where my head was. Gotcha. I'll, well, I'll volunteer myself for Squawk List when it comes up. Okay. And the Squawk List, I see, um, I also had a note about the airport security, um, just lights and kind of, um, you know, checking the airport. When we're in the area, I've done it before where I've just, you know, been coming home late and, and go uh, just take a drive through and loop around, or I'll see somebody on the ramp, just headlights and stuff and just cruise over and just be another presence there, another set of headlights, just to make them nervous if they're not, if they're up to no good. I think we um, need um, advisory board magnets for our cars though, because people are always staring at me while I'm driving around the airport. <laughs> just wear your dark glasses, have your headset on, have your, have your wired mic. <laughs> I'll give you a set of uh, flashing lights, Russell. There you go. There That'd you be go. great. Thank you. All right. So I've got Russell and Squawk List. Um, I'm, I'm going to put security kind of together with that. Talos, yeah. you want to be on that as well? No, not security, but development, because I think development, development is along gotcha. with uh, the other stuff that I'm already doing too with uh, economic development. Okay. You and I have got development. All right. Last, I've got an annual report. Melinda, I know you've been involved yeah. in this. I, yeah. I would like to work on kind of refreshing this based on the comments we got from council last year. Mm -hmm. Although if anyone has a, a special interest in being involved here. Uh, and I do recall those comments um, that we do it more like a corporate, uh, it for new people on the board, um, it was more just a, a historic view, a look back and nothing really forward and not kind of taking a profit and loss approach to it, um, you know. I can assist with that. That's my background. Okay, okay. I do That'd be great. forecasting for startups to get their capital. So that's exactly what I do. Okay, that'd be great. And just to get some so new eyes on it too, yeah. We can't have all three of us do that. Oh, you're right, we can't. Why not? Can't We're have not three. Or more of us together for open meetings. Oh, yeah, I, I can just be right. an as needed, or if you guys need me right. to add in just for the finance part. Okay. Okay. We will pull you in then. One, one of us will pull you in. On okay. Okay. Yeah. Melinda, do I recall correctly that when we got those comments, you asked, do they expect the same profit and loss report from the golf courses and things like that? Parts? Right. Um, the discussion, yes. Is good... that what you said? All right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did kind of have a beef about that, didn't I? <laughs> I do remember that. Yeah. And uh, 
but it does make sense and it is wise, especially if we want to position ourselves to be promoted by the city and, um, and be attractive to developers that we do have a, a more professional report that shows our vision and mission for the airport. So, and I think we're ready for that. Um, but yeah, we definitely did get uh, hacked about our a report that we don't even prepare. That was the other problem for new board members. We don't prepare the report. It was prepared and then we just had a chance to review it and look at look for mistakes, which there usually weren't any. And uh, so this will be an opportunity and it's not due, it doesn't get presented, I think, until... Well, so I, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. In our current yeah. panel, we're already we're already two weeks late. Are we? Okay. okay. So we're, we'll talk about that, but we're, okay. we're going to give ourselves a little bit more time. To do we'll that. just we just blame blame COVID. That's it. <laughs> I looked back at our at our history last year. We approved it in March, but we didn't actually take it to council till May. That's what uh, I was thinking. Because I was thinking May to that. June yeah. because budgets are in June. So, so we're um, gonna we're gonna give ourselves a little bit more more leeway yeah. for that. But I'll leave that for uh, probably next month when we can actually come back and talk. Okay. In detail. Does anyone else have any other comments? I've got a good list here. I appreciate everyone stepping up and volunteering for a few of these. Um, I think this will, will continue to define what this actually looks like in practice as we do some of these reports, but mm -hmm. um, I, I love the I love how we're all getting involved. So before we move on, anyone else? Are you going to post these uh, can, to finalize list of everything? And with... Uh, Yes. Yeah, will, it'll be in uh, the minutes and then, yeah, and then. Uh, I'll make, I'll work with um, Jeff or Michelle to get one of them to send it out to all of us from the discussion here um, so we don't have to wait for the minutes. That's good. And then if anybody yeah. thinks of anything else that was just um, based on our conversations and the things that we continuously are, are um, taking a look at and discussing, and just gives us a chance to get a little more, instead of all of us having 12 things on our mind that we can just have four or five <laughs> and, and uh, kind of dig a little deeper and, and, um, and report back or, or bring up new things or uh, at least be intelligent to engage in conversation. We had a really good presentation last year about um, development on the board, but the ideas were so new, uh, including like a park, something that I certainly had never thought of and had no, um, was so surprised by it. I didn't have any way to respond to it or, or um, you know, it was just a great idea, but that was as far as it went. So um, just to have a better grip on, you know, what is feasible, what's not, and kind of be the voice. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you everyone for that. I think that was, I, I'm excited for where we go with it. Um, I'm going to move us on then to our new business. We've got an airport hiring, airport manager hiring update. Um, Phil or Jeff, I don't know who it is, but Phil, do you mind just introducing yourself first? Um, yeah, I thought this I thought this might be a good place to introduce myself. My name is Phil Greenwald. I'm the transportation planning manager with the city. I work for Joni Marsh, and she's not here today, obviously, but uh, I um, will be taking over the supervisorial duties of the new airport manager when he or she comes on board. So just wanted to give you that heads up and uh, you'll probably see a lot more of me as, uh, as we try to assist the new person in, um, in taking this board or being the liaison for this board. So um, I've been working for the city for um, 22 years, uh, been in transportation for my whole career basically. And so uh, uh, they thought that uh, it was a, probably a good point to try to move the airport into a transportation realm. And I think that's, I think that's a great idea because we really are gonna start working about or talking about how we make a better team with that airport manager being part of the transportation group rather than being kind of its own appendage that, that uh, you know, maybe didn't get all the love that they needed in the, in the past. And you, you saw, you probably saw that firsthand. And, and so we're trying to, trying to bring the airport and the airport manager into, into being more uh, consistent, more more uh, communication with the city, and and Jeff's been great. I, I have to, you, you know this better than I do, but uh, I've been working with him just a short time and realize uh, what a great asset he's been, and how how grateful we all are that he was able to uh, give us the support, his time, and and uh, and we'll we'll be sad, we'll, we'll be very sad to see him go, but uh, he's going to leave us in really good hands because he's been part of the hiring team 
that we've been looking for for this new manager. So I'll just let you know that we uh, we had 19 qualified applicants that uh, that came toward or came to us as as far as their applications meeting all the standards that the uh, city puts forward. Uh, from that 19, we we found nine folks that really met kind of that that minimum threshold, that minimum standard that I think we were looking for as an airport manager. Um, from that, five people accepted our interview invitation. So we were able to uh, last week put together some interviews of five people. And then from there, we have three finalists that we'd, uh, we'd like to introduce to you, quite frankly. And, and, uh, and uh, we're trying to set that up right now. We're waiting for Joni to come back to kind of finalize things. But what we'd like to do is um, you know, interview them from, the inter from, from our team, from our city team, and then have them kind of make the rounds as far as maybe a meet and greet with this airport advisory board. And uh, I, I know Harold wants to meet them. And then uh, obviously, Marsha, as the, uh, as the, uh, as the air airport council member liaison, we would, ex we would hope that you two would be included in, the, in those meet and greets. So Councilman Martin, we would we'd want you to be part of that if you have time. So uh, we may do a bigger thing. We may, we may, uh, but this is kind of our first blush at what's going on. So very good to meet you all. I really appreciate the time tonight. I wish I could have been here last month, but uh, unfortunately I, I was, uh, I had to be uh, uh, kind of in charge of a vacation uh, to, to Hawaii. So I, <laughs> we finally got our vacation in from 2020. So um, I apologize for that, but I was having a, too, much, too much of a fun time. But um, with that, is there any questions that I can help answer? What's the time frame for the three finalists and the meet and greet, just to get an idea? And would they do it like evening, weekend, daytime? We're, gonna, we're looking at the um, end of the week on the 21st, okay. the week of the 21st or the beginning of the week, the 28th. So we do have kind of some flexibility. I, I think we all wanted it to move a little faster, but um, with people, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to align everybody here. So um, that's been that's been a bit of a bit of a task. So uh, we think the 21st and the and the week of the 28th will be our one of those. And we'll let you know as soon as we know and, and as soon as we have some organization around that. Perfect. Thank you. Did you have anything? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, one thing I just wanted to add on to fill out the three finalists uh, without disclosing who they are is that the advantage for coordination of uh, future meet and greets and, and interviews is that two are within the front range area. Uh, only one of the three are not. Thank you very much. Any other questions I can help answer or relate to Joni? Well, thank you for your time tonight. Any good sure. question? Yeah. Oh, so um, I'm sorry, I'm still learning so much about this and I apologize for any ignorant uh, statements. But um, when I got the tour of the Greeley airport, I met the Greeley manager. They were saying that they were more of an autonomous airport rather than a centralized city airport. By you making it closer to the city transportation organization, are you saying that you're gonna to try to bring the airport more within the city? And does that follow the overall trend of municipal airports nationwide, or is the trend to be more autonomous? Yeah, I don't have any idea what uh, what happens kind of nationwide and what the what the different values are. I think it's it varies by city and jurisdiction and where those airports are located. Uh, we just feel like the airport's been kind of out there without a without being part of the, the city team, and we really value that idea of a city team. Um, You'll know that uh, since since Jeff has taken over, we've uh, incorporated the public works, natural resources, their ability to really keep the the, the runways plowed when during our storm events, uh, and that was something that may may have been missing a little bit before. And also keeping all of our lights uh, in the you know on the field working well and uh, and 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 doing that. So just incorporating that just little element of teamwork has really gone a long ways, we think, as far as making the airport more of a part of the city. And, wouldn't, and fix, wouldn't the FBO supposed to do that? Like, isn't the FBO supposed to do those things like the lights and uh, the lights, you're not, FBO is not just to keep the lights on? No. Nope. Oh. Typically be the airport sponsor, who in this case is a city. Um, and I know, Jeff, you're, you're gonna talk through a little bit of those responsibilities. Um, one thing else I just wanna add, because I, I learned this last week, 
and don't quote me on the exact numbers, but 74 airports, I think, within the state of Colorado, 70 of them are city airports or something <laughs> around that number. It's yeah. nearly all the airports in the state. <laughs> uh, Russell, do you want to go ahead? Thank you. I just wanted to uh, respond to Talis a little bit. Um, since he's new, I would say that for many years, most people who have been associated with the airport and the airport board have been asking the city to take a bigger role and help out and not treat it as an enterprise fund orphan child that, you know, like Phil said, uh, it needs more love. And I'm glad to hear someone from the city say that. And I feel like a lot of our usual commentators at the meetings like Don and those people will be uh, feeling the same way about it. So I think it's a great thing that they're that we're hearing this kind of talk from the city. Yeah. And, and I'll just add on is that I have felt the love. Um, and if I hadn't, I honestly could not have done the job. Uh, the, the amount of work uh, that needs to be accomplished, both physical work, fixing lights, run, runway inspection, snow plowing, uh, you name it, um, invoicing, uh, could not have been done by one person. And so it, it, the advantage of being with the city or county gives the full breadth and depth of those human and financial and equipment resources that uh, can be brought to the table. Uh, and it is fairly common. And then, and then I'll just add on to just for education is that you know, the FBO is responsible for the products and services uh, that they offer at the airport. They are not the airport manager. They do not manage the airfield. They do not inspect the airfield, uh, maintain the airfield. That is the responsibility of the city. Councilmember Martin. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, actually, what Jeff just said prompted a question, and then I wanted to uh, clarify for, for Russell um, what Phil said. Um, there is management reorganization uh, going on inside the city. And I think what Phil, you are talking about is having the new airport manager work more closely with the rest of the, um, of the uh, transportation department uh, working for you, as opposed to uh, the airport manager was traditionally kind of an island <laughs> and didn't have a team. Uh, to work with and, you know, didn't have um, uh, a team to fall back on for things like transit to and from the airport, for example. Um, but the, in terms of the financial economic structure of the airport, which is that it's a Colorado enterprise and that um, it uh, uses the city shared services model, um, those things have been ongoing for a long time, and I, it's my, not my understanding that a change in that is contemplated. Is that correct? Yeah, the overall organization will not change, but I think Jeff said it well, and you did too, is that um, the idea is to provide more support for this, for this person and for this airport and for this facility. It's, uh, it, it's, it's time that we work it into and have and give it more support, more more resources that the city has available. So exactly what you said. All right, well, thank you, uh, Phil, for the hiring update. Um, Steve, sorry, go ahead. Along with the hiring of the manager, Phil, are you also going to be hiring an assistant? Uh, Jeff, maybe you can answer that. But it's not really an assistant, but it is a it is an extra person to help. Yeah, there there. My understanding is that uh, it was approved in the last budget for a hiring of an operations person. That person would be more dedicated to the airport around snow removal, around uh, airport inspection, airport maintenance, uh, runway, taxiway, light uh, repairs. It would be a shared um, position. So the airport would be paying for half of the person. The public works department would be paying for half of the person. Uh, so that person will work uh, in coordination between both the airport manager and the uh, public works office. 
and they'll be located just on the other side of the of, of the of the street, basically of the airport. So they're right across the street from you. Are we going to wait for the new manager to get settled in and his job before we do this? Uh, they have already um, maybe incorrect on this. I'm talking with Matt McKenzie, which is uh, responsible for um, recruiting for that person because uh, they've been working on recruiting new public works people, but have had a very difficult time finding viable candidates. Um, yeah. so I, I'm not 100% sure if that position has already been posted, but it certainly has not yet been filled. Hmm. That's my understanding as well. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. I'll move us on from hiring. I will just say I'm, I'm um, communicated to Joni and Harold that you know, we are, uh, I will call a special meeting whenever it's appropriate to have that meet and greet and that we're, we're eager to provide our input on that candidate. And they were, uh, you know, consistently been uh, really on board with making sure that we have a voice in there with the reminder that the decision making will rest with them. So I'll just add that disclaimer. Nice. Um, Jeff, you had offered to kind of do a little presentation on some of the sponsor responsibilities. Um, and I think that would be really helpful. So uh, I'll turn the floor to you for a little bit. Thank you very much. Um, if my sharing screen will work here. Everyone uh, see okay? Yes, we can. Perfect. So I, I'll try to keep this um, as short as possible. It's probably going to be uh, about 20 minutes, um, but I, and I'm not going to cover every item on this slide. I am happy to share this slide deck. Uh, this is an excerpt. So uh, myself and our firm has been teaching a class uh, for about 25 years with the American Association of Airport Executives. You see their logo down in the bottom right. And part of the class that we teach is on airport sponsor assurances uh, to ensure airport managers understand their obligations uh, as an airport sponsor uh, to the FAA. These airport sponsor assurances accompany uh, the receipt of grant monies from the FAA through the airport improvement program. Uh, there are 39 of them. Um, they cover a broad range of topics. A large number of the assurances are very specific to what a, an airport sponsor must do uh, during a, a project that they are being funded. Uh, some of the assurances have to do with ongoing obligations and responsibilities in the way the airport is managed and operated. And they do this to ensure that these public use airports, and I like to call them federally obligated public use airports, are developed, operated, and maintained in a safe, secure, efficient, compatible, and compliant manner. Uh, that's the intent of the airport sponsor assurances. As I mentioned there's, there's 39 of them. I will, along with sending out this slide deck to you, I will also send you the 39 assurances if you're so inclined to uh, read each one of them. It, it's worthwhile just familiarizing yourself with them. I'm gonna focus on about five of them um, that are probably most important um, from the aspect of ongoing uh, management and operation of an airport. Uh, these are the assurances that when a complaint is filed with the FAA accusing an airport of being in non-compliance, or if the FAA threw an inspection on their own without a complaint, these are the areas that uh, airport sponsors more commonly than not find themselves in, in violation or alleged violation. Uh, Assurance 5 is about preserving rights and powers, and, and really the objective here is that the FAA does not want the airport sponsor. And, and when I say airport sponsor, I'm, not, I'm referring to the city in, in this situation. Um, but they do not want the airport sponsor to do something that would deprive them of the rights and powers that the FAA wants to ensure that they maintain so that they can one, maintain compliance with the assurances, 
uh, and two, operate the airport in a safe, uh, secure, and efficient manner. Um, you know, an airport sponsor can give their rights away within agreements, uh, including lease agreements, operating agreements, permits, and just actions that they take um, can also uh, deprive themselves of rights and powers. And, and one of the things that the assurance requires is that if the airport sponsor ever finds themselves where they have lost their rights and powers, they must act promptly to acquire, extinguish, or modify uh, that so that they bring those uh, back into the fold. And, and by the way, because I've got the PowerPoint up, I don't see anyone's faces or hands. So if there is a question, I'm happy to pause. Uh, just to speak up and, uh, and I'll uh, be happy to address that. Um, one of the keys is obviously the safe and serviceable condition of the airport. Uh, this is a responsibility that the airport has under Assurance 5 in making sure that they maintain the airport uh, in that safe and serviceable condition. Uh, you, know, you see the word minimum standards in here, and I'll talk about minimum standards later from a commercial aeronautical activity, but the minimum standards within this assurance is, is the standards that the FAA sets up for the operation and, and maintenance of an airport. And those are the minimum standards that are being referred to uh, in this assurance. Assurance 22 uh, is about economic non-discrimination. It's a terrible title because uh, one of the, the tests that I always ask airport managers, I say, can you discriminate? Most people don't raise their hand. They don't think they can discriminate, but you can. Uh, what the words actually say in this assurance is that they must, the airport must be available on reasonable terms without unjust discrimination. So there are all different types of forms of just discrimination. For example, some airport may have a different type of fuel flowage fee for jet fuel than they do for avgas. That is discrimination, but it's just. They may charge a higher rent for boardwalk uh, than for North Carolina. Uh, that is discrimination, but it is just discrimination. Uh, they may charge a different rent for commercial businesses than non-commercial businesses, also just discrimination. So airports may discriminate, they just may not unjustly discriminate. Um, and the other important aspect too of this assurance and a few others is that you'll notice here that it says to all types, kinds, and classes of aeronautical use. So the focus of the FAA is about aeronautical use of the airport. Any non-aeronautical use has to receive approval from the FAA to release land for non-aeronautical use. But an airport sponsor may unjustly discriminate uh, against non-aeronautical use of an airport uh, because their focus is aeronautical use. Uh, they may deny use of an airport um, for non-aeronautical use uh, because uh, the requirement is to make it available for aeronautical use. Yes, Talos. So if I, if I got approached by an uh, aerospace company, it's not aeronautical or would it be? And like, like I need to learn or need to speak with someone about this process because part of my master plan is to use the airport for uh, a lot of things in R&D and stuff. So there is a uh, specific definition of aeronautical uh, and the short definition of that is to in, in, that it is directly related to the use of the airport by aircraft, maintaining aircraft, servicing aircraft, storing aircraft. It's about the aircraft's use. It's about things that are gonna use the runways. Would so a the, drone be an aircraft? A drone is an aircraft, yeah. Is it is like a space shuttle or rover uh, an aircraft? Like, would that be considered an aircraft? If it's using the runway. But drones aren't using the runway, they just go straight up. Well, mm -hmm. they if they use the airport infrastructure. So if they get plugged um, into a charger or is that? If they are using the airport, I mean, if they're flying in and out of the airport, then that would be deemed aeronautical use. If you're flying in and out of the airport. 
an interesting um, delineation between aeronautical. So you would think that aircraft manufacturing is an aeronautical use. It is not. And so Gulfstream Aerospace in Savannah, Georgia, uh, a lot of their manufacturing is off airport. And the FAA sort of draws the line on aircraft manufacturing saying, well, you don't need the airport to manufacture that aircraft. You need the airport for when you deliver that airplane. So when that airplane is completed and, and it goes across the delivery line, then it becomes aeronautical. And so their delivery center is on airport, their aircraft manufacturing is off airport. Uh, so FAA is very sensitive to making sure that land that could, on an airport that could be used for aeronautical activity is reserved for aeronautical activity. It doesn't mean that they won't approve the release of it, but the airport sponsor has to demonstrate that that land will not need to be utilized for aeronautical use for an extremely long time. And then at the point that it does need to be used for aeronautical use, it can be clawed back uh, for that use. Historically, I'll add, um, we had a, uh, Talis, there was a, a wedding venue that wanted to lease the far end of the runways on the west side and uh, conduct weddings. Um, strange idea and um, pretty quickly shot down because you, uh, for my high skydiving, they lease the drop zone and they, that's a public process. And so these, uh, this wedding venue that's actually just north of the railroad tracks came in and was trying to um, lease the space to hold weddings on the, the far west end of the airport. Um, and it didn't happen. So I think uh, the applications at our airport, I know the solar panels have been a question uh, that are way down also at the far west end. And, um, but I think that's pretty much it for the things at our airport that have come up in the past that it's all, but that you're preserving it. It's not necessarily, it's booked and committed, but it's being preserved. Yeah, that's a fair description. So should I just like take that out of my mind? Is it like a very difficult process where like we should, like if we're building new, like for example, that whole side of the airport that has no hangars and it's just, you know, field. Uh, if we wanted to build something on there, it would have to be aeronautical related basically. It would be, yes. Thank you. Uh -huh. So one of the other requirements of Insurance 22 is ensuring that similar uh, commercial aeronautical activity businesses are cha charged the same rates, fees, and rentals for the use of similar land and improvements. And that is really the nuances of this, is that very rarely do you find a business using the same or similar land or facilities or providing the same or similar uh, services? So an aircraft maintenance company is not similar to a flight training company. A uh, aircraft storage company is not the same as an FBO. And so an airport can have different rates and fees and they can have different uses of, of land and improvements. Uh, too often people interpret this, they see all these words same and think that they have to treat everyone the same and that's not always the case. Each uh, commercial activity uh, also needs to be provided without unjust discrimination. So some of these assurance flow through to the uh, providers of services <coughs> um, and, and the airport sponsor is obligated to place certain provisions within the operator's lease agreement to ensure that they're providing their services on a reasonable and not unjustly discriminatory basis to the airport users. The assurance also uh, gives the ability for the sponsor to establish uh, reasonable rules and regulations. And I'll also add in the word minimum standards here, uh, which falls under that context of rules and regulations that have to be met by all users of the airport. Um, again, focused on safety and efficiency, but also minimum standards brings in that minimum threshold to engage in a commercial aeronautical activity at the airport. 
the airport does have the right to make decisions on uh, what is safe and they may prohibit unsafe activities at an airport. But ultimately, the FAA is the final arbiter uh, of that decision. Uh, they determine what is safe and not safe at a federally obligated public use airport. One of the things is in Assurance 22 is that the sponsor may engage in com competitive commercial aeronautical activities, uh, but certainly not required. And the FAA even states that uh, private enterprise in most situations is best positioned uh, to provide the commercial aeronautical activities at the airport. But if an airport sponsor wishes to compete, they have to compete uh, following the same rules and minimum standards. Um, the airport sponsor uh, cannot uh, prevent non-commercial self-service activities. So an aircraft owner can maintain their own aircraft with their own employees and their own equipment. Um, they can't use a contract uh, uh, entity or individual. Uh, they can't use someone else's hangar and someone else's equipment. Uh, they have to do it themselves. One of the keys is exclusivity. They cannot grant exclusivity for use of the airport. And this is primarily focused around commercial aeronautical activities. Uh, the act of exclusivity is about debarring others. It, it's really not about if there's one. Uh, it's just about if you are preventing others from doing it that are willing to meet your rules and regulations and your minimum standards. Um, this is one of the tools the FAA uses to ensure um, broad use of a federally obligated airport. The interesting thing that a lot of people don't know and understand because they think that an airport with only one FBO is potentially violating this exclusive rule, but more than 90% of airports with a 3,000 foot paved runway or more have only one or zero FBOs. A very small percentage of airports across the country have two or more FBOs. And I define an FBO as an entity that at a minimum is selling fuel. Uh, we call an aircraft maintenance company or a flight training company, uh, a SASO, a specialized aviation service operator. Also under Assurance 23 and exclusive rights, you know, they talk about the different meet, the different mechanisms that exclusive right can be conferred. I've seen it written in, in the lease agreement. You will be the only FBO on the airport. That's a clear violation of Assurance 23. If the airport sponsor sets the minimum standards at, a, at too high of a level, um, that's raising the bar to an unreasonable level that can be interpreted as granting an exclusive right as well. I think I already talked about why the FA um, doesn't want exclusive rights. The, the only time that an exclusive right actually can be granted on the airport is the airport sponsor itself can exercise what's called a proprietary exclusive right. So they can choose to be the sole provider of a certain commercial aeronautical activity and deny others from competing with them. Uh, there are actually uh, over 1,200 airport sponsors that do act as their own FBO. Uh, sometimes those are in scenarios where the airport can economically support private enterprise or investment. Um, and it just is out of necessity that the airport sponsor provides those services. Yeah, I'm not gonna hit every single slide here. Assurance 24, uh, there is an expectation of the FAA to have a rental and fee structure that makes the airport as self-sustainable as possible and the key extra words here is under the circumstances that exist at that particular airport. The FAA is not naive. They understand that a lot of airports, especially general aviation airports, uh, are not able to be self-sustaining and many times requires uh, the support of the airport sponsor, whether that be the city or the county, or including the FAA that provides AIP funds. 
uh, but they want you to strive towards that goal of self-sustainability, which means rents and fees should regularly be reviewed, kept either at market or kept at a cost recovery uh, basis uh, to move that pendulum towards self-sustaining. And that's the real quick one. Um, you know, again, there's 39 of these. Uh, a lot of these have to do with what they have to do during a, a project, an AIP project. The other question that lots of times get asked is how long is an airport obligated uh, to these assurances? And that's sort of a moving goalpost goal um, because, let's see, I'm gonna stop and share here. Um, one, every time an airport receives an AIP grant, then the clock starts over again. Um, and depending upon the type of grant, uh, dictates the length of the obligations under the assurances. And there are a few assur assurances that once you've accepted that they go into perpetuity. Um, but uh, the, the key ones typically are 25, uh, years to the life, <coughs> excuse me, the useful life of the AIP project, um, of what, however that money is being spent. And those are sort of the two bookends. Happy to answer any questions. Uh, again, I know I, this is fairly high level. I spent a day and a half on this topic uh, in my class. Jeff, we appreciate you uh, condensing it down to a, not a day and a half for us. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone have uh, questions for Jeff? We're good. I'm going to assume that's just because you covered it all, Jeff, and, and we're okay. I, I learned <laughs> a few covered things. Covered it or bored them. One of the two. No, I, I, I learned a few things. I, I usually think about some of those in the context of commercial service airports. So it was interesting to kind of hear the, the way you apply them to GA airports. So Pro probably the one point I didn't state, and I'll just add this real quick. Why do we want to stay compliant with these airport sponsor assurances? Because we want the AIP money. Mm -hmm. If we aren't compliant with the assurances or if we're found in non-compliance, the, the two threats that the FAA has over an airport sponsor is one, ending access to AIP grants, or the other worst case scenario, uh, which has only been triggered one or two times in my uh, memory is where you need to pay back all the money we've paid you. So we don't want either one of those scenarios. Mm -hmm. all right, well, I don't see any other questions. So again, Jeff, thank you very much. Uh -huh. um, Michelle, you have the next item here. Talk about a pre-interview plan. Yes, I do. So um, city council has um, directed the city clerk staff to um, bring back a new procedure for um, board and commission interviews. So um, what we're going, what we're, what we've done is we've met with all the boards liaisons, the staff liaisons. Um, We've discussed the idea to get gotten their feedback to input on how this would work best. Um, most of the board liaisons were generally enthusiastic about the, the change and um, being more involved in recruitment. So the timeline that we're looking at is, so I just got to move this over here. There we go. Um, we're, we're taking this to council on Tuesday night for their blessing. So it'll go to the study session on the 15th. Um, it'll start for, with the spring recruitment process, which is gonna start in March and um, bet out some, some things. So um, what we're looking at is opening um, board recruitment on March 14th. We'll open it for six weeks, ending it on April 22nd. And then, um, I will compile all of the applications, vet them, make sure that they're all uh, registered voters, they're legal or city residents, excuse me. Um, and then we'll set board interviews 
we send those to a, um, a nominating committee, I guess is what we would call it. Um, so we'd have two board members from the board and the board liaison um, who would um, interview these folks and, and basically you're gonna ask pretty much the same questions that council asked, asked you when you interviewed. Um, you'll send those recommendations back to me and then we will then in turn give those recommendations to council so that they will interview those folks and then appoint. So basically what we're doing is getting the boards more involved in um, the recruitment process and getting the best people on the boards at this point. So that is the pre thing, pre interview process in a nutshell. So if you have any questions, let me know. Anyone have any questions? So Michelle, I mean, pending, pending council's approval, um, we would then have a couple of us involved in that process. And I assume that at a future meeting, we would decide who those are, correct? You could, you could. Um, we, we, when we talked about it with the other board member or board liaisons, most of them said, you know, the chairperson and one other person, keep keeping it to two so that we don't have to have a special meetings and then the board liaison. Um, you would have one month in order to do those interviews. Um, so for spring, for, for instance, the board interviews would be May 1st through May 31st. And then we would need those recommendations back to me by June 1st of who you would want council to then interview. And then they would, inter I would set up those interviews and then they go to council for appointment. Got it, thank you. Um, Jeff, did you have something there? I was just uh, wanting, uh, we skipped over my airport uh, manager report. And so just want to circle back and not skip that. I am sorry, Jeff. We checked it off the mm -hmm. My bad there. No worries. I will, I will come back to you. Uh, Melinda. For Michelle on the, um, the recruitment. So is that to fill, it doesn't sound like it works with filling um, empty board seats by June, by June or is it? No, it actually does. So it does. Um, okay. boards are, are recruited <coughs> twice a year, once in the spring mm -hmm. and once at the end of the year. And so since we have a vacancy, it would go, we would put that vacancy in for this year. Good, okay. For the mid -year. Fantastic. Council Member Martin. Um, yeah, Michelle, I'm, not sure I caught, does, does the um, advisory board narrow down the number of applicants so that the council does? They would actually, so if there's one applicant or one yeah. vacant position, they would nominate one, just the one for one okay. position. So if there's so, four vacancies, there'd be four, four applicants. Okay, so the council no longer has a choice at all or the council? Mm -hmm. Correct. Can send back a, a person if they don't find them qualified. Correct. Yeah, and, and like I said, this is going to council, so we can discuss that on Tuesday night as well. A little more okay. detail if you want. Okay, thanks. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so we Thank just wanted you. to make sure that like, you know, for March, you guys are ready to, you have a, a nominating board, um, somebody who you want to interview um, all the applicants, and then when it comes down to May, when it comes in May, you hold, you can either hold your, your meeting, your board meeting that night for, or that month, you know, and do applicant interviews, or you can do it separately, you know, whatever you want to do. Okay. Uh, Russell. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I guess I thought I understood until you responded to Councilman Robarton, and now I'm confused. Uh, if there are four applicants for one board seat, what happens? You would just get, so if there's four applicants for one seat, you would nominate one person. Okay. If there's four seats, four applicants, you would nominate four people. So however many number of applicants, vacancies you have, you would nominate that many people for um, appointment. Okay, so let's say, we have four people interested and then you know we whittle it down to one 
we send them over to council and council says, you know, no, this guy's no good. What happens then? And then we go back and start from scratch. The next opening window or the same window? It would have to be the next opening window, which would be the end of the year. I guess I would, I find this uh, puzzling myself to, to whittle it down like that and then have the chance of, you know. And like I said, it's, we're just taking it to council Tuesday night. Can we they, do like a first and second alternate? <laughs> like just give you a Like I said, choices. they're taking it to council Tuesday night. And so they can figure out all that. That's it's council's direction. Um, so it's up to council to what they want to do. I'm only just bringing it to you so that you are aware, you know, coming up in the next couple of months that you will need to do interviews and, and nominate somebody. So I just don't want to blindside anybody with, oh yeah, by the way, now you've got to, you know, do this too, so. Russell, do you have a follow I think uh, I would move that we recommend to council for their consideration on Tuesday that the idea be changed to a ranking system if there are multiple candidates instead of just only sending them the number of board seats available. So when you- So can I, I'm gonna just point of order, I guess on that, whatever I can do with my rules. I don't think we have any ability as an advisory board related to the airport to make that recommendation. I think if you would like to make that recommendation, do it as a citizen to your council reps. And one thing I did forget to say is that um, when you get the, so there's a, a rubric that we use, that we've given to council um, that has a bunch of questions on it and, and basically you score your applicants. And so to you, uh, we've offered um, board liaisons to use that. Um, that way then it, you know, you can score everybody. And then if you have more than one, then you can recommend those to council. But it's not just going to be like, oh yeah, he's good. Or, you know, he's my friend or something like that. They want to keep it pretty, you know, political, not political, pretty plutonic and just um, even. So just throw that out there. Thank you, Michelle, for, for bringing it up and keeping us informed. Absolutely. It's a, yeah, it's a positive improvement because uh, we have felt like um, why we weren't a part of the process um, to look at the candidates. Sometimes there aren't very many. Sometimes there's, I think there were 12 when I got my seat. It was a huge field. And um, so it's, it's really good that the board can actually interview and, and um, narrow some things down to get yeah. uh, uh, removed detractors. We've had detractors to the airport that have applied in the past. And, um, and then it's not really based on aviation experience. We find that um, that isn't necessarily the most important. Um, mm -hmm. We've had members with real estate experience, other you know development, other aspects. So this is good. This is something I think we've asked for in the past or asked for that ability. So this is good, but it, it does sound like it needs a little refinement. Yeah, and like I said, we'll let council refine. They'll they'll tell us what they want, and yeah. and then we'll bring it back. So nice, nice. Thank you. And I can email you all on Wednesday morning, um, and let you know kind of what what was decided, and go from there. Is that a working session, or will that be televised? It's the study. They're all televised. It's a public session. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's next yep. Tuesday, Tuesday yep. the fifteenth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Yep. I don't know if anyone else hears. I have weird feedback, at least on my end, when I'm talking, and I apologize for that. It's better now. To... It was just for a minute, but it's better. All right. I don't know how to fix it or what I did to make it worse, so I apologize. And I really apologize for skipping you, Jeff. Okay. I, I'm keeping track. I'm making tick marks off, and I got too excited and ticked two off. When <laughs> you were talking. So I'll turn it back to you for, uh, for updates. Thank you. Um, so as Melinda had reported, um, uh, about three weeks ago, our VASI uh, was brought back into service. Um, it, uh, as I think I may have reported, it, it is owned and operated by the FAA. Uh, different airports uh, have uh, different scenarios, but uh, uh, it, it, when I got on the airport, no one was really for sure. Uh, and so I did hunt it down and figured out that it was the FAA. I had the 
extra benefit since we just got done managing the Boulder Municipal Airport and my employee that got hired up there, I was just mentioning to him about our VASI and he said, hey, I'm pretty sure I've got a VASI sitting in our storage shed. So they went and looked and they did. And so the FAA went and grabbed that and brought it over here to Longmont and got it installed. So uh, that's up and running. Hopefully no one wipes it out. Which brings me to my second topic. We did have an aircraft accident at the airport yesterday. Um, fortunately, it was, uh, as far as I know, not serious. Uh, unfortunately, no one has formally reported it to me. Uh, I was not on the airport yesterday. Uh, one of the city ops people uh, had come across it as the airplane was being lifted by a large forklift. Um, it was landing on runway 29. Um, I do not know what happened, but I believe from what I have speculated and observed that there may have been a landing gear collapse on it. Um, we have cameras that face the runway and believe it or not, as I was watching it from my home to, to try to figure out what happened. The first camera, you can see the plane landing. Then there's a little gap in the two cameras. And then all of a sudden the plane is careening off the runway. And so I was like, well, what happened in between there? Um, but it, I'm uh, hopeful that no one was injured. No one, it didn't get reported. Obviously, if there is an aircraft accident with an injury, you're supposed to report it to NTSB, you're supposed to leave the aircraft where it is. None of that happened. So. I'm assuming that it was, uh, other than looking bad, wasn't bad. Um, they did take out one runway light. Um, I did, uh, I don't have a specific answer, but from the last meeting, there was a question about uh, restrooms on the south side. Um, I did do just some preliminary uh, uh, discussions within the city, uh, the department that builds a majority of the restrooms around the city is uh, parks and recreation because they build those restrooms uh, uh, at, at parks. And so they do this quite often. I was quite shocked at the potential cost uh, of a restroom facility, uh, depending upon, you know, the design uh, and stuff anywhere from 150 to $300,000. Mm. Um, the Thanks. Yeah, it's, I was shocked and I'm not advocating that we spend that kind of money, but I'm not going to stop either. So as part of the South Side utility projects, we are working on um, including a T where a, um, uh, a restroom facility could be teed in to the utility line project. Uh, I'm Again, I did very preliminary discussions with Park and Rec and they connected me to the company that they use most of all. So I'm trying to gain more insight to, okay, what do you get for that and how can you pare that cost down? Uh, so I will, I will, or the next manager will report more. Um, on February 1st, uh, the State Aeronautics Board did approve our grant for $54,000 uh, for pavement uh, uh, marking uh, improvements, basically repainting runway taxiway lines uh, at the airport. Um, I did have our p and &E firm do some preliminary budgeting uh, to do everything uh, that needs to be done is about $85,000. Uh, so we still are a little short of what we need. However, as I believe I mentioned in our last uh, airport advisory board meeting, we are going to be, excuse me, we are going to be receiving some additional funds through the infrastructure um, uh, funding mechanism that it will open up uh, about $295,000 for the airport. And we will be able to tap into that my understanding, I'm actually going to attend a webinar next week uh, with the FAA where they're going to describe the process and what is eligible uh, for use uh, under that. But my preliminary discussions is that we should be able to bring in that extra 30000 uh, into this project so we can do everything at once. Um, we continue, as any airport does, um, getting... Uh, complaints about noise. Um, and as I try to educate people that call that the city does not control the airspace, that the FAA reserves uh, all jurisdiction to controlling airspace. So if they have issues of low flying airplane, 
uh, which that's probably half the, the discussion, um, that uh, they should contact the FAA directly on that. Um, I do try to embrace the concept that whether or not we have control of the airspace, we do want to be a good neighbor. You know, if they're able to provide me more information uh, about when, where, in the airplane, I even point them to the app called FlightAware, where you can identify, you know, tail numbers and height of, uh, of aircraft flying. You know, more information they can give me, the better I can, you know, reach out to the um, aircraft if it was even flying out of Longmont, just to encourage them to be a good neighbor. Uh, one this weekend um, called, and he's in the apartment complex. Um, I still don't know my roads very well, but the road that parallels Target, basically on the uh, base turn to 2-9, um, there's an apartment complex there. And I get, I, there's about three residents there that call me regularly. Mm. Um, and there was one plane that, and I went on to fly to where to look, because they said, it's going over my house again. They did 20 touch and goes um, <laughs> that day. And I, you know, I'm a pilot, I get it, you know, we do our training, um, but we need to be cognizant that 20 times over one house in the same plane with the same engine noise is, can be annoying. Um, so uh, it's just a battle that's an ongoing battle and, uh, you know, trying to balance the needs of the community and the needs of the airport users and we all try to be good neighbors. <laughs> I've been that person, but I do. I'm Greeley. So <laughs> you get on a roll and you just, you're in the zone and you just got to keep doing it. And, uh, but I go to Greeley to do it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Steve, did you have something? Yes, Jeff. Uh, regarding security and changing the codes for the gates and all that, what do we do about the gate that's continuously open when the skydiving operation is is going on. Yeah, no, it's it's something that needs to be addressed. And, and I'm also hoping that with the um, extra infrastructure fund monies that we can not only finish the uh, fencing uh, on the airport, uh, especially on the north side where you can literally drive onto the airport off of St. Brain Road, uh, but also that uh, gate, which is not an automatic gate, it's a manual gate that right. they uh, prop open. And so I'd like to get it to be um, an automatic gate that they can control, you know, with, you know, whether that we put a speaker there so that they can control the access versus just blocking it open. But you know, granted, we have some security holes in our airport that really do need to be addressed before we change the code. Good. Thank you. Uh -huh. Anyone else have any other questions for Jeff? Uh, maybe I'll, I'll just throw one one more out and and uh, I'll look for criticism if I'm wrong. But my friend, I'm not a stakeholder. I don't own an airplane. I don't own a hangar, so I'm not considered a stakeholder. And all of the HOAs uh, on the airport, they send out letters to their their members and all of that. My my friend sends those to me, which I understand we shouldn't get those. But I know that you, Jeff, have sent letters out to stakeholders a couple of times and I've gotten those letters through my friend and I'm just wondering if we on the on the board should get those letters as well absolutely and it, it, I'll consider that my bad uh, Harris and I were talking about that earlier when we were uh, doing the agenda setup and I realized that I didn't have all of the board members in my e I have 275 in my email master list um, and so I've added today uh, all of the board members. There's actually going to be one going out tomorrow, um, and we'll uh, make sure that you all are included. Um, and so, yes, yeah, stakeholders are beyond uh, aircraft owners, operators, lessees. It's anyone that wants to know what's going on at the airport. There's no reason uh, people don't have access to that. Oh, well, thank you for that. I know that's, that's more out of our purview. It's more day-to-day -day stuff, but it just keeps us in the loop. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Robinson. Thank you. Uh, Jeff, are you sure that you don't want to sell your consulting business and just stay on as the airport manager? 
because that would make me happy. All, all in favor? I, <laughs> what, what's the old adage? I don't think you can afford me. <laughs> uh, I yeah, would have seen the salary. But, they, but thank you for the sentiment. I, I do appreciate it. Anyone else? Got it there, Russ. <laughs> We've tried a couple times. I figure we'll just keep bringing it up. Yeah. <laughs> just keep going. Um, we've got uh, last final public invited to be heard. Um, unless I'm missing something, Michelle, I don't think anyone's joined us from the public. No, there has been nobody asked to come on. All right, thank you. So then I'll move us on to board council and staff comments. I'll start with the board. I've got a couple items for me, but I'll entertain anyone who wants to go first on this one. All right, you want to just keep hearing me talk. Um, so first topic, um, bylaws. We talked through these last month. Um, I will own the fact that they're not on the agenda this month because I went on vacation before I got them to the city, man city attorney's office and we couldn't meet the five-day turnaround time to get it in front of all of you before voting. I had a discussion with the city attorneys on this week is running together, but I think it was Tuesday um, to talk through those. Um, we uncovered the annual report that we hadn't caught before that says we delivered in February. We're going to adjust that to give ourselves some more time. Um, we are going to incorporate most of the changes we talked about as well um, as part of the meeting. There's two things I wanna flag and you will see this next month on the agenda and you can choose to accept them or vote them down. One is instead of having the language be that the chair sets the agenda, it will be that the chair coordinates on the agenda with the city with the airport manager. Um, since I've been informed that we can't direct city staff to take action, including setting an agenda. So we will coordinate with them instead of directing them. And two, um, Bill had a phenomenal suggestion for our stand or just general agenda, and I can't remember the word, the, um, the proceedings I think is in the bylaws. Instead of what we have now with old business and new business, the suggestion is to clarify it as informational items, such as Jeff's presentation today, and action items where we actually need to take a vote to recommend. And so it keeps us very clear on what the purpose of the item is. Um, since honestly, the old business, new business seems to blend together in these discussions anyway. Um, so you'll see those in the bylaws along with a handful of the other changes we discussed and a handful of just grammar cleanups. Um, Russell was especially helpful in flagging some of those just really awkward sentences that have been in there for a few years that were making make logical sense now. Um, the other topic I just wanted to bring up and Jeff uh, hinted at this in his update, um, but as part of my day job, I was at the Colorado Airport Operators Association meeting in um, in Denver last week, where they had the Colorado Aeronautics Board approve our grant. We also had one other call out from the CDOT Aeronautics head who mentioned specifically that they are really trying to re-engage post COVID and get back out to airports. And one of the things they really enjoyed was airport expos and called out Longmont as a particular favorite of their team and something that they always appreciated being a part of. Um, so I, I just wanted to kind of make it known that that, that um, you know, those of, those of you who've worked on it in the past years, it was appreciated. It was called out specifically um, at the meeting. Um, and just more broadly, the CDOT team is really trying to push, uh, being more engaged. There's a ton of funding coming down. Um, really want to make sure that we're using it the right way. So for the next airport manager, there is an engaged group at the state level. Um, that is looking for local airports to be plugged in with them. Um, so, um, can, I add, can I add to that that yeah, the airport directories that they produce, they produce the map and then the spiral. Um, yeah. uh, for the last three years, I've flown down to pick those up and it's really fun to do it. So we picked them up for other airports while we were there and you fly in and you taxi in between the hangar row and they bring them out to you and um, you're right next to um, the state patrols division of aeronautic activity. And uh, so it's always kind of a running joke for me because I have a little problem with speed. 
usually know all those people. <laughs> and so, uh, but you just taxi right up and then like Sean Soderberg will come out and they'll bring out the cases. And so we've, I've done for three years, gone down and picked them up, brought them back to Longmont, Boulder, like Erie is some of the smaller airports around us. And uh, so if you have that opportunity or feel like going down to get a directory, you can taxi right on up to the door and let them know you're coming and they'll take your picture and make a big deal about it and take you on a tour of the facility um, and treat you like a VIP. So they've always been very welcoming and um, very engaged. And Sean does all the photography that we see. He does or most of the photography, I think, that we see on the covers and uh, they appreciate getting to see the people that are out in the out in the field. Um, so I encourage you to, they're down at um, uh, Colorado Spaceport. So you just uh, get cleared and taxi over there and you can have a fun little adventure, an excuse that you don't have to go find food, you can go find directories. Excellent, thank you, Melinda, for, for adding on to that. Um, those are my comments. Did anyone else think of anything you wanted to talk about while I was droning on? Council Member Martin, do you have anything for us this evening? Um, uh, not really very much. Um, have been been talking about uh, sustainability issues that uh, we might um, be adding to the airport improvement plan, but uh, I haven't had my meeting with Jeff yet, so I think I'll save those for next time because I don't want to speak out of school. How are you feeling, Jeff? Uh, I'm good, thank you. For those that don't know, I came down with COVID the end of oh. January. So oh, I was not up here last week uh, because of that and uh, mm. just turned the corner probably on, on Monday or Tuesday of this week, but thank you, Marcia. And I'll, yeah. I'll follow up with an email to you. We'll get our meeting rescheduled. Good, all right, I look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Martin. Um, last, I've got city staff comments. Jeff, Phil, anything else that we haven't covered already? Nope, I'm good. Just thank you again for uh, letting me kind of sneak in here and listen in. Appreciate it. We're glad to have you. All right, I don't think I've double marked anything. I think we've actually hit the adjourned section of the agenda. So um, everyone, thanks for a good discussion tonight. Appreciate it and hope everyone has a good evening. We'll, we'll call the meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thanks. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.